Hey everybody, welcome to Gaming On Board. Tonight we're looking at Il Vecchio. This game was released in 2012, um, and there was three different versions released. This one, um, license is always held by Hall Games. Um, so we have an, uh, the first edition, English was 2013. There was another first edition in English and German and Italian in 2012 by Pegasus Spiel, and uh, there was another in Italy, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name of the company <laughs> that released that one. But it's the same game, just a little bit different box cover. I think they had like a blue border around here with a little Pegasus symbol there. But anyways, um, this is a, really it's a worker placement, pick up, deliver, um, kind of area control game, because there's places on the board that you get points for controlling the majority of. But let's uh, see what's inside the box. So first off, um, why don't I show you the back of the box first. So it is kind of a big box game. There's the back. And this is the reason I bought it. I mean, I just really like games that have a lot of options and a lot of... Uh, different paths to go down and this one just looked like you had a lot of options and again this was a clearance game it was 60 percent off at the local game store here in wilmington north carolina um cape fear games if you ever get a chance to go there it is an awesome shop all the employees play games themselves it's just really cool um you can check them out at capefeargames.com but uh so el vecchio is uh, set in Florence around 1430. Uh, the Medici, Medici family gains dominance over the city through Cosmo, Cos, Cosimo de Medici, also known as Il Vecchio, the Elder. This arouses enviers. The players take the roles of heads of Florentine families to try to infiltrate the Medici fam, uh, empire in order to become the city's new ruler. So basically they're just trying to take over the city from this uh, Il Vecchio guy. And you have to basically infiltrate the different parts of the rulers of the city. So it's two to four players, 60 to eight a minutes. I've heard it's more like 60 to 120, depending on the number of players. And 10 and up, I guess so. I guess a 10-year-old could pick this up pretty, pretty easily. All right, Tasty Mentral. Let's see what we got. Here's the rule book. Take a look at that. Shows you all the different pieces you have in there. Shows you what the game should look like when it's set up with steps for each part, which is always great. They give you a little background on what's going on, what you're trying to achieve um, that adds to the... Um, theme of the game i've heard some people say it's not very thematic but i mean in my opinion it, it is and i'll talk about it as i go through the components um so you're trying to take over basically trying to you know infiltrate the government during that time um so you've got all your different actions you get one action per turn it goes around the table you get one action per turn uh, and it has details on every little action you can take. Um, there's events that happen once you take over certain areas. Uh, once you take a seat in one of the positions of power, these event tiles come out and some things happen. And then there's uh, some places around the board that you can take a place in as well. And when you take a place in there, you get to choose a tile from the stack. And it just tells you what each of the tiles does. And then these are the city council and nobility. So you're, you're, you're infiltrating the city council and becoming one of the nobles. Um, so it's pretty cool. Let me go through here. So here's the game board. And something I noticed is the game board is double-sided. And I got excited at first because I was like, oh, cool. So maybe there's, you know... Two different ways to play the game. That's not the case. It's basically just different art. 
So this one, I guess for your first few games, it has different colors. So it's easier to tell the different sections apart. And then on this side, it's just all one color. I think it looks cooler this way because it makes it look like one big town. But I guess it is a little bit easier to keep track of everything here. So let's take a little closer look to the game board. There's a uh, score track around the outside. But you're not going to use that during the game. It's just when you're ready to score, you'll put one of your family members here and then move it. So, and these are the spaces on the outside of the game I was talking about. See there. So basically, to get into one of these spaces, you have to have two of one type of tile and one of another type of tile. And if you're playing a two-player game, you have to pay five bucks to take this spot. It's worth nine points at the end of the game. And then the tiles go here that you get to choose from once you take a place there. So, and the different tiles are assassins, soldiers, and clergymen, I believe. So, and then here's the uh, places where you go for uh, the city council and the nobility. And as you go, see the first one here, you'll choose one of these tiles. Second one, you'll choose one of these tiles. Third one, an event happens, and you get to choose one of these tiles. So, you get the idea. These yellow spaces, and same goes for the ones around the board. If there's a yellow space, an event happens. Once this is gone, all these are gone, everybody, we, you finish that round, and then each person gets to take two actions one more time. So instead of just taking one, you're kind of taking a double turn. So that's your like last chance to uh, do some more stuff right at the end of the game. And these paths are not an action in this game, and this is something else, this is really cool to me. Um, you have to spend money to move. And there's also tokens that are like a wooden wheel, which represents like a caravan or a wagon or whatever. So you can spend one per movement and then activate wherever you end up. You can activate that location. So if I wanted to move one, two, three, I'd have to pay three coins, and then I'd still get to activate that spot. But if I had a wagon wheel, I could move here all the way up to here by just using my, my wagon or my caravan. So that's a cool movement thing. Um, so anyways, these are, these are the different areas. So basically, anytime you put some more of your family members out into the community to start you know, putting in work to take over this uh, government, or I think it's the Vatican, really. But, you know, Rado mentioned that in his video. He, he said something about this being the Vatican. But I, I kind of get that idea because there's priests involved, too. But anyways, you roll a dice. You roll a pair of dice. <laughs> and whatever you roll, you get to choose where you want to place your guys in that area. So any city in that area. So if I rolled a four, I could go here, 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 or here. There's a variant where you don't roll to place family members and it's it's to remove luck, any luck from the game. So you just choose instead of rolling. Which I also like that. Anytime there's a variant to make the game a little different, it's cool. Um, so yeah, that's the movement. Um, and let me just go ahead and get into the other pieces. So there's a the board. Back to the box. So these are those tiles I was telling you about they go on the board in these spots right here. I'll just leave the board out so we can kind of talk about stuff as we go. So these tiles, these brown outline and white outline tiles go here, right there. So whenever you do end up, you know, coming up to this town and paying two scrolls and placing your guy there, you get one of these, and it's worth two points at the end of the game. And these do different things. Uh, you'll have to look it up in the book to see exactly what they do. I really don't know. Um, then, same goes for here. Two scrolls go over here. It's only worth one point. But I'm guessing that these might be a little bit more powerful. Yeah, okay. So these are in-game. Um, these are in-game 
goals. So these are more like achievements. And then these are special powers. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Because at the beginning of the game, you get three of these. You choose one, and then put the rest back. So you would choose one. So yeah, these are special powers, and then these are in-game achievements. And those go there. I'll just leave them there. And then, what is this? These are those round marker tiles I was talking about. So, yeah, anytime you go to one of these spots and you land on a yellow, or you go one of these outskirt areas and land on a yellow, you'll remove one of these events and something will happen. Uh, I'm not sure what that means. Maybe you move... You move all the inside men. I'll show you those later. Anyway, when these are all gone, that's when the last round triggers and everybody gets that double turn. Um, let's see what else is in the box. So these are the tokens for the soldiers and the assassins. And this thing, I think it goes there. And you have to pay three bucks to get the power up whenever you land here. I don't know exactly, but that's what that's for. And then, money, money, money. First player token. Alright, so there's the wagon wheels I was talking about. So you can use those to move anywhere on the board. These are bishops. So, thematically, these are letters from the bishop. So, you've got the support of the church. And... What's really cool and what I think makes it thematic and makes it cooler for me is these little spots um, where you would need to do, where you get to do certain things. Like this is, let me see if I can go in here and get this out. So if you were to do an action right there, it says you can either get a scroll or get five bucks. So this thing... And a sticker goes on here. Here's the stickers. And these all get stickers on them. I don't like putting stickers on uh, components when there's a ton of them, but this is okay. This isn't too bad. Um, so yeah, when you go here, you can use this middleman. And he's kind of your go-to to hook you up with whatever you need. So in this case, you're trying to get a scroll... So that you can infiltrate. So that's cool. This is somebody you've met and you have a relationship with. And he's going to hook you up with the scroll you need. Then when he helps you out, he runs off to the next town. Okay. And because he's probably done something he shouldn't have done. Because he's helping you get rid of this, you know, Il Vecchio, the elder guy. So that's cool. Um, plus... If you had a person there and you used the middleman, it took some effort, you know. You had to talk to them and get that deal worked out. So they lay down and then you have to rest them. It's something else in the game. That's one of your actions is to rest your people. But if you have, if there's no middleman there and you have a letter from the bishop, it doesn't take any effort. You've got this letter. You give it to the guy. They're like, oh, okay, the bishop said this is what you need so here you go this you get it because you've got the bishops you know good graces and you don't expend that that worker you can then keep doing stuff with him so that's cool you've got the blessing of the church a letter from the bishop that goes away you get whatever benefits there even if the middleman's there or not so i thought that was pretty cool so that's what those are and then the only other thing i took out to show you that was these tiles, and these are the tiles that go in these different cities. This one doesn't go here. You know, these are actual cities, and the tiles match each city. So, this one goes up here. And there's, I think, five or seven for each city. Something like that. So, and the artwork's decent, you know. It's not... You know, they just didn't throw something together like a, <clears throat> you know, Ascension or anything like that. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love Ascension, but you know that first artwork. Anyway, they look pretty good. Those are those tiles there. So when you go there, you get to 
pick up that stack of tiles and then choose which one you want. And these have, you know, one-time abilities. And I think you get to choose when you want to use them. So you hang on to them and then do whatever you want. And then here's the other dimensions. There's more dimensions or denominations of uh, money. So there's that. Oh, everything's just popping right out. That's good. I don't have to worry about tearing anything, trying to get them out. And then there's the scrolls. There's not as many scrolls because, you know, you got to have two to get in here. And I'm pretty sure once you get a couple of them, you're going to be headed that way. So, and then this looks like you know, some more money. And I told you what the wagon wheels do. Here are all the family members and the middlemen. So these middlemen are the ones that you can talk to and they'll hook you up with whatever it is you need at the moment. Um, and then, you know, each family, there's 12 family members. You start with four on the board, you'll roll these dice, uh, unless you're playing the variant, or you don't. So I rolled a four, so I will put my first two out in area four somewhere, and then all the other players do the same thing, and then I'd roll them again and put my second two out, and then we're ready to go. And these are wood. These are good quality wood pieces. Not plastic, which plastic's fine too. Um, and all the tiles, you know, they're not little flimsy tiles. They're good tiles. There's the stickers. And then these are the, you know, turn options. So like I said, you can collect tokens. If you need to travel, you can as part of this action. So you pay one coin per town. Or you can use one of those carriage. There you go. One of those carriage tiles. And then move as far as you want for free. You lay down the family member because it has, you know, it, it took some effort to do whatever you were trying to do. If you talk to a middleman, you move that middleman. Or you can pay a bishop, you know, to do the same thing. In which case, it's literally saying... Either lay down your family member and move the middleman or pay a bishop. So, like I said, you don't lay down your middleman. Or you don't lay down your uh, family member. Uh, and then you collect tokens, you know, depending on what you're doing. Um, travel to a red town if needed. Gain a province tile. Yeah, these are the provinces. So you pay whatever it requires. Place a family member on the region track. This is the region track. You pay whatever is required, which is always this. Just to get into the province, you have to have whatever this says. And it's different for each one. So just to get in, you need a soldier and a clergy. Just to get in, you need an assassin. And then you have to pay the money and you get the victory points. So that's that option. Gain a province tile. Gain a Florence tile. That's where you actually go to Florenza, which is Florence, and pay the two scrolls, put your guy on the first spot, and get one of these tiles, depending on which track you went to. Okay. And you actually draw the top five and keep one. So it's, it's not, you know, some people have said that these power tiles are un you know they're not balanced but I, I mean i really can't say but i mean if you get to look at the top five and keep one you've got a pretty good chance of getting one of the good ones um then another option is to roll the dice and place a family member unless you're playing the variant where you don't roll the dice and then the, your last option is to recover which is Stand up all your family members. They're laid down. So at some point, you're going to have to do that. And I, I think it's best to wait till they've all been used, right? Because if you just do two actions and then stand them up and you've got five workers out, you're wasting a turn every two rounds to stand them back up. But there's some tiles that give you a bonus for standing them back up, so who knows. And then here's some simple final scoring so like i said once all these are gone you'll do final scoring so you'll take one of your family members put it right there and then that's how you keep track of your score and it goes all the way up to 100 so 
should be enough. But I mean, this game came out five years ago and I've never even heard of it at all. I don't understand it. Um, there's some really mixed reviews saying that it's, it has no replayability. I don't see how there's so many different, you know, variables in it. And I've heard it called like a, a pure pickup and deliver game. I don't know about that either. I mean, yeah, you're getting stuff and taking them somewhere to get a benefit and points. So I guess it is pick up and deliver, but it just seems like more than that to me. Um, but anyway, the components are solid. I can't wait to punch it and play it. I'm definitely taking this to board game night at Cape Fear Games this coming Thursday. Hopefully I can get some people to play it. There's a lot of Euro gamers there. And I think they'll be interested in it. So that is Ilvecchio, question mark. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. Um, seems cool to me. I uh, hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, also, we do have a GamingOnBoard.com live now. So all the YouTube videos here will also be there. There's links to the Facebook page and the Instagram page. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, uh, I do post pictures every day. Um, if me and my son play a game, I post pictures every time we play a game. Um, if I'm out and I see something interesting or I find board games in a store that you wouldn't expect board games in, I usually post pictures of that too because it's cool just seeing that some random store like Hallmark might have a board game in it. But anyways, um, thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Gaming On Board.